Aloha, everyone. Thank you for joining me on Think Tech Hawaii. I am Shonda Park, your host for Money Talk. I have Ken Hurley on the show today. He is a regional sales director with One America and has been focused on the long-term care market for more than 35 years. He began his career in the insurance industry in 1984 and has worked with many companies across the West Coast. Ken is passionate about lending his many years of expertise and experience in long-term care planning. Welcome to the show, Ken. Thank you, Shonda. I appreciate you having me on today. I appreciate you being on. So, uh, Go ahead. I was to say, let me tell you a little about myself, if I may. Yes, please do. So as Shonda mentioned, I've been in the long-term care industry for more than 35 years. Uh, it's something I'm very passionate about. I, both my parents experienced long-term care. Uh, I have had many friends and family members that have experienced some levels of long-term care in their lifetime. Uh, actually, one of my counterparts who is like a little sister to me, she's going through it right now with her dad that has Alzheimer's, and he's going on eight years and just had some health issues and uh, went to the hospital about a week ago. They're preparing his house to be able to bring him home. So it's very fresh on my mind with one of my closest friends uh, through work. Uh, so I'm very passionate about it. I also have some fun hobbies. I'm an off-road enthusiast. I go rock crawling in my Jeep in Northern California, up in the Sierra Nevadas. So that's what uh, I spend a lot of time doing. Also, uh, I spend a lot of time with my family. What's rock Sorry? crawling? Rock crawling. So uh, it's going very slow over boulders that in some cases are size of cars or even bigger. And what's a lot of fun about it is there's places where you'll go where the, you don't see a road because there's really not a road. You're just going over the, the large rocks. Um, I have a Rubicon, which if you ever look at Jeep Wranglers, you'll see there's a package called the Rubicon. It's because the trail, the Rubicon Trail, which is very famous in the off-road community, is about four miles, four, sorry, about four hours from my house. So I, I go there quite a bit with my son, who's also an avid off-road uh, person, and I uh, spend a lot of time with my two grandsons and my wife and love to travel. So I stay pretty busy. I'm, I'm rarely home. I like to be on the go, go, go. Sounds like a lot of fun. It is. <laughs> and the rock crawling, that sounds dangerous. As it's, it's really not that dangerous if you just pay attention. Our idea of fun is at three miles an hour. So we tend to go very slow, but you have to, to go over the rocks. You can't go fast. You have to go slow and really literally just crawl over the rocks. Nice. And you, of course, you have your long-term care in place, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, I, I'm one of those guys that, uh, as some of my work friends have called me, I'm a long-term care geek or a long-term care nerd. I have a, a handful of policies, actually, that I've bought over the years and for my wife and I. Good, good. Always, you know, awesome to have all of that in place and, you yes. know, multiple ones as well. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what is the importance of November? Yeah, so November is very important in the world of long-term care for a couple of reasons. One, it's Long-Term Care Awareness Month, and, and that's a very important uh, time for us in the long-term care industry to really uh, do everything we can to um, get the word out and educate the consumers today about long-term care and, more importantly, long-term care planning. It's all about having a plan, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. The other thing that's also uh, important about November is uh, the day, the Monday following Thanksgiving is a special day as well in long-term care. And what's special about it is that happens to be the busiest day of claims filed in the long-term care industry. And the reason for that is what's going to happen Thanksgiving? Family gets together. We get together, and, and for, some, for some folks, they haven't seen a grandparent uh, maybe since the, follow, the prior Thanksgiving or Christmas time or 
maybe it's been a few years, and especially this year coming out of the pandemic, we definitely haven't seen people like we normally have. And so what happens is we're at grandma's house and we're having dinner and we kind of notice that maybe grandma's not quite dressed like she normally is. And maybe grandma's leaving the stove on and maybe there's some spoiled food in the fridge. And we're, we're just noticing some things that aren't the way we think of grandma. And so what happens is on the Monday following Thanksgiving, the phones are ringing off the hooks at every long-term care claims department because the fam this is a family issue. And so the family's picking up the phone and they're calling the claims department to say, we need, grandma needs some, some assistance. And so uh, Thanksgiving, the Monday following Thanksgiving, busiest day of the year. The only reason it's not Friday is we like our Black Friday shopping just like everyone else. So we're at the stores and we're closed on Friday. But Monday, our doors are back open and the phones are ringing off the hook. And that's happened for as many years as I can remember, because it really is a family issue. Yeah, very true. It is. And I'm sure the phones are ringing off the hook on Friday. However, no one's there to answer. Right. Yes. So they're calling back on Monday. Right. And you know, statistically, too, that there is a, um, a second busiest day of the year, too. Yes. Yeah. The second, yeah. The second busiest day of the year, you know, it, it's kind of follows that same theme of getting together with family. And, you know, when I ask uh, an audience what day they think that is, most people will say, you know, it's Christmas, New Year's, then they'll go to Mother's Day. And when I get to when I hear somebody say Mother's Day, I say you're close. It's actually the Monday following Easter Sunday for the same reason. You know, Easter time, family gets together. Uh, it's spring break for a lot of kids or grandkids. And so let's pack up the kids and go see grandma or aunts and uncles. And that's when they see and experience the same thing as they did at Thanksgiving time. And for many families, that's the one time a year they get together is Easter for spring break. And they see that grandma's not doing so well or grandpa or, or whomever that family member is. But that's when they see it is because we get together again, as a family. So second busiest day being uh, East, the Monday following Easter Sunday. I see. Yes. And like you said, it is a family issue. So what is the, the question that is asked? If you can bring up the first slide. Yeah. So this is a really important question. You know, so many people think that it's never going to happen to them and, and they're just not prepared. So I like to ask this question, and I've been asking it for 20 plus years of, of folks, is you, never, you may never need care, but if you did, how would that affect your family? And you know, when we think about that, it could affect the family uh, very drastically. The first one is the spouse. You know, for so many people, they think, well, my spouse will take care of me, and I don't have to worry about it. Well, it's not easy to take care of our spouse, and think about how we might be taking care of a loved one when they're healthy today and we're young. I'm 58 years old and, you know, my wife doesn't really need anything. You know, I cook dinner once in a while and, you know, do those things. But I couldn't imagine having to take care of her when I'm 80 years old and she's 80 years old. And that's when it becomes very difficult. It's yeah. also tough on on the, the children. You know, for so many children, they'd have to, um, you know, taking care of a loved one means that. It's hard on the marriage. It's taking away from their family time with their kids. The family dynamics is another thing that plays into it with so many families. They don't get along when all of a sudden a parent needs uh, care. And so it can really uh, test the siblings how well they get together. And then there's the unnecessary losses. And, and that can be uh, both through work, uh, not being able to uh, work and having to take time off, or uh, just uh, other family commitments that you have, not being able to take care of those. So it's very difficult uh, and the family losses can be tragic. Um, you know, so many times I hear stories of people that they don't speak to their brothers and sisters anymore because they, they had to take on the burden of taking care of a loved one, a parent. And why didn't my brother and sisters help, whether it was physically or financially, and they they did all the work and they're saying, you know, why did I have to do it all? And so now they're not speaking. And so it tears families apart as well. 
it's, it's, it's very tragic. Yeah, I see that all the time as well. Yeah. yeah. And what can families do about it? Yeah, so it's really all about making a plan. So, uh, you know, there's a few things. So some people say, well, I'm going to I'm going to look for, um, you know, how am I going to pay for this? Well, that's something they haven't really thought through. And some people say, well, I'll, I'll let the government pay for it if you want to show the next slide. So I'll let the government pay for it. And, and the government paying for it means for most people, Medicare pays such a small amount. We really can't rely on the government's Medicare program. It's designed for hospital stays and doctor visits. So they say, well, what about the government's Medicaid program, which is also welfare? Well, in order to qualify for it, you have to be poor. How do you become poor? Well, you have to spend everything you have to where you don't have any dollars remaining. Uh, and then you qualify for the government's welfare program for long-term care. A lot of people say, well, well, what about traditional long-term care insurance? And traditional long-term care insurance can be an answer for some people, but one of the issues with traditional long-term care insurance is the prices can go up and, and we do see rate increases on policies. Uh, the underwriting can be more difficult uh, for those type of long-term care policies. And the last one that's a big one for so many consumers, they say, well, what if I never use it? Just think of all that premium I spent and I didn't receive any benefit back. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. And then the last one is the People to say, well, I can pay for it out of my own pocket. Well, paying for it out of your own pocket sounds great. The reality is people run out of money pretty quickly. And, you know, one of the things I like to remind people, we, we, there's so many people in the country that have uh, second properties, um, rental homes. Um, you know, maybe they rent apartments or they rent homes. And they say, you know, if I ever need long-term care, I'll just use one of my rental properties. I'll sell that rental property to pay for my long-term care. Well, then I, I just simply asked that one question. How would you feel about selling that rental property if it was 2008 all over again? You know, most people that own rental properties, they were buying rental properties in 2008 and 2009 because they were on sale. The last thing they wanted to do was sell a rental property. And we don't get to pick and choose when we need long-term care for home care, for facility care. That's out of our that's out of our control. Uh, exactly. So we can't control when we might sell a property because of it. Right. In, in the same sense, right? you, you can't pick that year either. Yeah. Right. Right. So can yeah, you go the cost of uh, long term care? If you can bring up the next slide. Sure. So the cost of long term care, you know, has been going up at, at a little over three percent per year, and this has been true for the last twelve or fourteen years. So in except for 2019, this year, correct? I'm sorry. Except for this year, which this year it right, right? went up even more. Yes. yes, absolutely. So the cost of long-term care is expensive. And I want you to keep in mind, so I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. I travel to um, uh, Wahoo quite a bit. I was just there and met with Shonda uh, two weeks ago. So I'm, I'm over your way quite a bit. And, and the one thing we have in common is the cost of living is more expensive than most parts of the country. Yeah. And so the numbers that you're seeing, these are actually national numbers. So we know that they're even more expensive in the Bay Area where I am. Yes. And in a while. Oh, yes. So, Definitely. Yeah, so we're, we're going to, we know it's going to be even more expensive. And if you look at 10 years from now, uh, long-term care could cost as much as $145,000 a year. 20 years from now, over $200,000 a year. And keep in mind, that's a national number. That's not a, that's not a number in Hawaii or in the San Francisco Bay Area where I am. That's a, that's a national number. So it's going to be even higher. So let's go ahead to the next slide, if, we, if you don't mind. So people say, well, how long do people actually use long-term care? Well, we can, we can see that for males, uh, generally about two and a quarter years. And if we look out 20 years from now with this national average, that's over 400, almost $450,000. Ladies, about 3.7 years. And, and the reason it's longer for ladies is, quite frankly, that most of the time we're gone. So, the, you know, any care that we might have, all, have been able to provide you at home before you needed more home care or to a facility, 
we've already passed on and, and we're not there for you because generally speaking, the ladies outlive the men. And then if we look at the big one, you know, Alzheimer's and dementia, $1.6 million on an average with an eight year of needing care. And, and this isn't eight years of being in a nursing home. We're not talking about nursing homes or, or assisted living. We're just talking about long-term care in general. And, and something else I also want to mention is that, you know, people that, re, re, that purchase long-term care policies, they receive care at home. About 85% of all those who have long-term care insurance policies are able to stay at home. So it's really all about staying home. And, you know, eight years for an Alzheimer's patient is kind of the average. And that's a long time. But Alzheimer's doesn't kill us physically. It kills us, unfortunately, up here. But people are able to live for many, many years with, with Alzheimer's and, and other forms of dementia. So it can get very expensive and can last a long time. Yeah. And, they, and, and like you said, eight years is just the average. Right. So in some situations, it can be, you know, a lot longer, yes. which can then lead to several millions, not yes. just seven. You know, you can get into two million and three million for for that type of care. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, a, a colleague of mine, his uh, his wife was diagnosed in her mid 40s with uh, uh, multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. And within just a matter of months, she was in a wheelchair. Well, here it is over 20 years later. She's still going strong, unfortunately, wheelchair bound since shortly after the diagnosis. And uh, luckily, they have lifetime long term care coverage. And it's it's really saved their family from going bankrupt. And she's been able to get the care she needs. And her kids were young when, when it first started. And, and they were able to keep some semblance of a normal life with what she was going through. So you just never know when it's going to happen and That's how long it could happen for. That's a very young age. Yes. And to be a long-term care claim uh, in, in her 40s. Yes. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about that, about the lifetime benefits? Sure. So uh, there's only uh, two, two companies that offer lifetime benefits. Uh, our company, One America, is one of those companies. And what's so nice about the lifetime benefits is, you know, most of the other policies uh, and products for long-term care that are available have a limited period of time that they'll pay for. With lifetime benefits, it doesn't matter whether you need care for six months, six years, or 16 years. It never runs out of care. It will continue to pay for your long-term care services for as long as you will ever need long-term care. And that's a really nice feature. You know, most consumers, when you talk about long-term care, they're not concerned about, you know, a few months or maybe even a year or two of long-term care. Um, even though it can be expensive, you know, for so many consumers, they say, you know, I could, I could probably pay for that. What they're really concerned about is, what if this lingers? What if I linger and I need long-term care for a long period of time? That could wipe out my life savings. I could have to sell my home. Uh, it, it could just, you know, everything I've worked for, for a great retirement, all of a sudden now it's all lost because I wasn't prepared for it. And I needed care for many, many years, you know, and, and it can just destroy somebody's overall financial being just over, it seems like overnight. Yes, very true. Next slide, please. Because when you talk about the average for the male and the female, yes, it may seem very low. However, you have those, you know, other type of cases, like you're saying right. about your friend's wife, you know, it's a wonderful thing that she planned ahead and she has the lifetime mm -hmm. benefits because having it in her 40s, she may be on long term care for over 20 years. Right. Right. Yeah. You just never know. So, um, you know, speaking a little bit to this slide. So there's lots of ways that people can fund a long term care policy. And and with this product, this is a, what we call asset care. Uh, lots of different ways to fund it. And, and the 
the way these policies work, the asset care policies work, it's based on a life insurance chassis. And the, the reason that's important is because no matter what, I can promise every client that purchases one of these policies, they will receive benefit for, from the policy. So we can pay one time and never have to write a check again. There's a lot of people that like to just write one check and be done. Uh, we can pay using qualified money. So money from my IRA, my 401k, um, those type of monies that we've put away, uh, we can use those dollars. We also can pay over time. You know, not everyone has the ability to just write a check for uh, a policy, but they want to write a check, a, a small check every year. Maybe it's over five years, over 10 years, over 20 years, or pay to age 95. What's, what's nice about these policies, and we can go ahead to the next slide if you don't mind. What's nice about these policies, and, and here's where our lifetime coverage comes in, is one way or another, I can promise everyone that, that has one of these policies, they'll receive something from the policy. So if we look at the, the circle chart, you see that we, in most cases, we're just using some uh, conservative money. We've got moderate investments. We've got some aggressive in investments. Then we have that, that conservative money. And we just take a little bit of that conservative money out of the portfolio, whether we're paying it one time or over five years or 10 years or to age 95 or using qualified funds. But what I can promise every client is there's, if you decide at some point to cancel the policy, and we don't see many people doing it, but from time to time, people, for whatever reason, something changes, they cancel the policy. When they cancel the policy, there's cash value. So they get something back. You wouldn't receive that in, in a traditional long-term care policy. Uh, the next one is there's a death benefit. So if you never use the policy, your family would receive a death benefit when you pass away. And then, of course, there's the long-term care benefits. And the beauty of this plan design in this particular scenario is the lifetime coverage. So it doesn't matter whether I use it for six months, six years, 16 years, there's always going to be a benefit available for the client to have that ever ending bucket of money every month to pay for their long-term care services. Yeah, that's very reassuring. Yeah, um, let's go. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry, Tonda very unique um, about your company. And when I heard that you're able to use qualified funds, so you know, for people who have their retirement savings in a 401k, that you can actually roll over your 401k yes. into this type of plan, right? In your asset care right. um, product. Yeah, so if you can bring up the next slide. Yeah, so this is a way that uh, uh, a lot of people like to buy our policy. Now we're not gonna avoid the taxes. You're still going to have to pay taxes because when you uh, initially put the money into, whether it was an IRA, 401k, whatever type of qualified account, you didn't pay taxes on those dollars. So you still have to pay taxes. But what we do is we actually spread the tax burden out over a 10 year period of time. So what we do is we, in this example, we're using $100,000. And the $100,000, we move it into an IRA annuity. And the reason we do that, that's to keep it still as a qualified fund. So you're not taxed on all of those dollars being moved day one. We give it a 20% bonus. So that 100,000, just like that becomes $120,000. And then for the next 10 years, we're going to take a distribution every year for 10 years of $12,000 out, out of your IRA annuity, and that pays for the policy. Now, as I said a moment ago, you still have to pay the taxes. So how do you pay the taxes? So every year for the next 10 years on that $12,000 withdrawal, we will uh, send you a 1099, and you'll need to pay taxes on the $12,000. And at the end of the 10 years, we've used up all the qualified money and your policy is now paid up and you never owe any premium any longer. What so many people like about this is, you know, there's a lot of people that have qualified money, IRA, 401k, 403b, and they put this money aside and they come to find out as they get into retirement, they don't really need the money, that they've got 
other sources coming in, their social security, maybe they have a pension, maybe they were just really good savers, they paid their house off, and they have all this qualified money that they don't need. Well, the biggest risk that they face as they get older is long-term care. So it's a great way to use those dollars for your long-term care. So a great approach that so many people like uh, using qualified dollars. The last thing I'll mention that we need to move on, we're getting close on the clock. Next is uh, uh, So it created a $117,000 death benefit and on that $100,000, and it paid out over $3,000 a month for long-term care. So here's just some of the ways that people use money uh, to pay for it. But the best thing is that it pays the policy off in 10 years. So let's go ahead and, and keep moving if you don't mind. I believe that's the last one. Okay. Yeah. John, do any other questions that I can answer? Yes. Yeah, so real quick, um, can you use um, money from your health savings account for this? And then also, um, can, you, can it be paid from a S Corp and a C Corp? Yeah. So uh, for the health savings accounts, there's two components to our policy. There's what? There's the life insurance component, and then there's the extra long term care, which gives you that lifetime coverage. And that second component, what we call our continuation of benefit rider, that's the piece that we can use um, money from an HSA. And it is restricted. There's what we refer to as age-based limits. So we have to look at, depending on your age, how much you can use from an HSA. And then for business owners, anything other than a C-Corp, you can deduct it from your federal income taxes. Once again, the continuation of benefit rider. And if you're a C Corp, which there aren't a lot of C Corps, if you're a C Corp, that continuation of benefit rider, 100% of it can be paid for by the business. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you, Ken, for being on the show today and sharing all of this wonderful information. Again, One America being one of only two companies that offers lifetime benefits for long term care. Thank you again, Ken. And I will see everyone on the next episode. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.